Aryan. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? All well, Aryan. So, uh, Aryan, what brings you over here? Why corporate law? Sir, actually, throughout my legal internships and law school, I've tried various legal internships. And after doing an internship in corporate law, I realized that this is something that I'm really interested in. After that, I've also pursued a course in mergers and acquisitions that made me realize that corporate law is something that I look to pursue in the future. Okay, that's great. And why I said Khetan? Sir, Khetan is a top tier law firm. I want to, I've done my uh, internships in various tiers of law firms. And now I'm looking to do an internship in a top tier law firm just because of the volumes of the deal and the type of work or the exposure that I'll be getting at uh, such an organization. Okay, perfect. So I, I think, you know, what we do is just to get things started. Uh, I just, uh, you know, if I could request you to run me through your CV once. Just tell me yes. about your educational background, what kind of internships you've done, what all you've done in law school. And maybe we can take it forward from there. Certainly, sir. So my name is Arun Puri. I'm a fourth year law student pursuing BBLLB honors from MIT World Peace University in Pune. Uh, I've done my uh, 12th from Army Public School, Bhalakwa. I am interested in corporate law. And I've done various legal internships in both litigation and corporate law. And uh, I've worked in uh, law firms as well as uh, as a part of the in-house team of organizations. I am also keenly interested in legal research and writing, sir. Okay. So I very recently also pursued a course on uh, mergers and acquisitions from Betting Results itself. And that has been one of the major reasons that I'm currently looking for an internship in corporate law because uh, up until now, all the internships that I've done have only touched upon the concept of basic corporate consultancy, but now I'm look to get, uh, looking to get further into the field of corporate law. Okay, perfect. So can you just give me an idea of what all internships uh, you've done? Uh, yes, sir. So very recently, the internship that I've done was uh, in a law firm called AA Associates in Pune, where I had uh, worked on white collar crime cases. It was a litigation internship. I wanted to try my hand at litigation uh, before I actually decided to go on corporate law. There I was assisted in drafting various legal documents for a white collar crime case and uh, legal notices for uh, as the civil side. And before that, I've done an internship with another corporate law firm in uh, Pune, wherein I have Nehru and company, yes, sir. Therein, I had uh, worked on basic corporate consultancy and on some research related to the insolvency and bankruptcy code. Before that, uh, sir, I've also interned at an organization uh, as a, a PSU organization by the name of uh, Hart Pullers Housing and Urban Development Corporation. There, I was a part of the uh, in house team, was interning with the in house team and uh, studied the various internal policies and assisted in conducting the legal audits of their uh, regional offices, sir. Got it. So, uh, you know, just to take a step back, I think currently you are interning at Securitas Group. What is that yes, about? So Securitas, Securitas Group is a uh, Swedish company. I'm currently working with the sector of AMEA, that is Africa, Middle East, and uh, Asia Pacific. Uh, it's a, it has been a very recently started. The group basically deals with physical and data security. I am currently working on the data security in legal team, sir. Oh, that's great. So uh, I think uh, so. this is for the entire month of April? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. So tell me, so AA Associates, I see you prepared a short notes on the legal recourse or solicitation of clients of a company. So what was that about? You can just tell so, me. Yes, sir. So actually the thing is that was, uh, the fact was such that uh, the solicitation was done by a person who was still working in the organization. Generally, non-solicitation clauses in agreement are not valid because they go in uh, the restraint of trade as per section 27 of the Indian Contract Act. However, uh, since you are still working with the organization, solicitation of clients or employees would be in breach of uh, his employment agreement. We had filed a civil suit in this case, sir. Okay, perfect. So what also, you did some case law research. What, what was your uh, role in this? So actually, uh, for this, uh, I was uh, given the case at, I was given the case at a very preliminary stage. So my main... Uh, uh, scope of work in this case was to go through the agreements, find what is the validity of such solicitation clauses in the agreement and how do they function, sir. Okay, perfect. So uh, tell me, so like you said, so there is non-solicitation as uh, is not generally allowed post your, uh, you know, so even non-compete, non-solicitation, these are considered as restraint on trades. 
and post your the work that you've done it's not allowed for you to put them in contracts but people generally put them as a deterrent which is the you know so so that's a mental deterrent for the person in there uh so did what kind of case laws did you come across so although i currently don't remember the names of the exact case laws our like what was the jurisprudence around so it was basically that uh, all of these clauses are valid as uh, before the termination of the employment or the termination of an agreement because an employment agreement uh, terminates once the employee uh, moves from moves on from the company so before the termination of these agreements such clauses are valid and in addition to that there is also a non disclosure clause that is generally uh, taken in this category uh, the non disclosure clause however uh, survives the termination of the agreement and uh, in this case the solicitation clauses wherein uh the clients of the employees of the company cannot be must not be solicited by the party of the agreement here in this case since he had solicited the clients of the company uh it was held to be uh, incorrect while he was in employment with the company okay good so that's good uh then again i think you would you just help them start some other notes which were there research for assisted in drafting various legal documents for white collar crimes what are these types of legal documents that you help draft so for white collar crimes uh, i had worked on cases where i was responsible for drafting and anticipating bail applications in cases of white collar crimes sir okay yes sir you were helping them draft with anticipatory bail yes sir yes sir what is the concept of an anticipatory bail how does so, it so sir an anticipatory bail is a pre trial bail that is uh, given under 438 section 438 of the crpc it is generally given where a person is in anticipation of an arrest and he proves his willingness to cooperate with the proceedings because the whole concept of taking a person into jail is so that uh, legal proceedings can uh, can proceed uh, and without any interference from the said person or any witnesses are not harmed or any evidence is not uh, tampered with so if a person uh, has any anticipation of being arrested uh, he can approach the sessions court or the high court stating that uh, he is in anticipation of being arrested and promises to uh not interfere with the uh, investigation process okay perfect so now let's uh, so move uh, to your corporate internship so i see you at nehru and company you were in corporate uh, and you interned there for 8 weeks that's good so what was it was a repeat internship or how did it work so i had first one uh, got a one month internship but then then i got extended for another month so okay good that's good and what type of work so do, do they generally do so they do uh, mna work or general corporate advisory or what type general of general corporate advisory sir okay perfect so research on various compliances under labor and environmental laws for acquisition of a factory what are the different type of laws for acquisition of a factory labor so and- sir, it, sir factory uh, so the factory is generally governed by the factories act which yeah. in itself has an entire plethora of uh, compliances that need to be taken care of from uh, making of washrooms to the fair treatment of employees from uh, having a register where all of the employees come in so that was the major scope of uh, compliance and the industrial industrial disputes act then in the environmental laws there is a to establish a factory and to operate in a factory under the air and water act a consent to establish and a consent to operate is required so were these consents were these licenses taken by the uh, factory that were must were taken by the factory and in addition to that on any other uh, labor licenses so there's a factory uh, factory needs to have a license to operate so under the factories act as well it needs to have a license so is that license ought to be there with the factory and how does the transfer of that license works okay perfect uh so factories are, and environmental laws what so environmental compliance is what all are there so sir so there's uh, under the air and the water act uh, to establish and to operate a factory you need to have the consent to establish and a consent to operate you know that is right yes a cto and a cp and is a cto transferable so if i am buying the factory uh, so does it come with the factory or is it uh, which is there with the company so if i'm just buying the factory and not the company so is it transferable or how does it work so if i remember correctly sir so uh, cto according to maharashtra uh, i believe it is transferable uh, it can be uh, the name of the company i believe can be changed once it has been acquired got it uh, so i think other than that you worked on classification of loans without any interest as financial debts according to ibc drafted a dissolution of partnership in case of death of a partner so when you draft a say deed of dissolution of partnership in case of a death of a partner what are the basic broad parameters that you look at or do you looked at when you were drafting it what structurally how is it structured 
so the basic parameters that i looked at was uh, was the business uh, going to continue but here in this case there were two partners so the business couldn't have continued since for a partnership a uh, minimum of two people are required one of them had passed away the other than that uh, since one of the partners had passed away uh, their nominees or next of kin next of kin would they get any share in the profit or how is it uh, given in the preliminary partnership deed other than that uh, would uh, so that this should this must be the last deed of partnership and other than that there would uh, no legal action must be taken after this deed has been signed by the parties sir okay perfect so basically just a waiver saying that you know waiver and release yes, please sir. and waiver kind of thing saying that after this there are no claims this was how much money yes, sir. owed to you which is being paid off so all our debts are cleared nothing else going forward and if there are assets uh, which the partnership had then those assets get divided based on whatever yes sir Point. Perfect. Uh, that works. Uh, again, I think prepared a short note on validity of non-compete, non-solicit, and non-disclosure clauses. You've been doing a lot of that, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you you've worked a lot on this particular topic. You know that's good. Assisted in writing a legal opinion on applicability of prevention of corruption. Um, so you worked on IBC also. So do you have some interest in IBC? You studied IBC. Uh, something about it, sir. I have uh, yes, I've studied the basics of IBC. However, I am not that inclined towards working in IBC, sir. IBC. Since so your yes, interest sir. is mostly towards M&A uh, and that side. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, my interest is uh, towards things that do not involve litigation at the moment, sir. <laughs> no, no, perfect. And I see that you made a lot of these publications and academic achievements. Also, the publication to blog titled "Sebi Stakeover Amendment Hit and Miss on Delisting." What is this about? So, so Sebi had come up with an amendment in the takeover regulation, wherein now we can, uh, in a single offer, make a delisting offer and a takeover uh, offer. So, therein, uh, the time limit after the MSP has been crossed, but ninety percent has not been reached, had also been increased by a period of one year. However, our analysis in this paper was that uh, even after the increase of that one year, it is not enough since the company might have to give away its shares to go back to the MPS at a uh, reduced price and may incur business losses. So we, uh, in this paper, had suggested that uh, the shares must be uh, scaled down on a pro rata basis, uh, even after even if the uh, it's supposed to stay uh, listed. Perfect. And I see that you know, in furtherance to your uh, you know idea to go ahead with mergers and acquisitions and corporate laws, so you did this membership program in M and A. So give me what is M and A for you, and you know, so whatever you've learned, what do you know? What is M and A for you? And basis the course that you've done. So say what are the stages in the life cycle of an M and A, or whatever you know about it, or something interesting you found about the topic, if you'd like to discuss that. Yes, sir. So mergers and acquisitions is basically. A merger is where two uh, one or two or more companies come together to form an entity to do their business, and an acquisition is where one company acquires another company, and they generally function in the name of the acquiring company. Uh, mergers and acquisitions are also a concept of joint ventures and amalgamations. In mergers and acquisitions, mergers could generally be of uh, four types, which is horizontal, vertical, uh, co-generating, and conglomerate mergers. And uh, mergers are generally uh, Undertaken, so they begin with the term sheet, which is the preliminary document, which could be binding or non-binding, uh, depending upon how it is stated in the term sheet. And uh, on the basis of the term sheet, due diligence is conducted, which is an in-depth analysis of the company, uh, wherein you find out how, from the history of the company to the present of their functioning, you find out all the licenses or anything that they currently have or the need or any pending litigation or uh, how they entirely function. After that, a uh, depending on the transaction, a share purchase, shareholders, or a share subscription agreement is drawn up, and on the basis of that, the the, the furtherance of the transactions. Sir. Perfect. So, uh, tell me, in college, you studied the company that uh, till now. Uh, your what all have you studied within corporate law? Sir, actually, uh, in college, uh, since my college offers a uh, honors program model, so we've uh, just begin. With our corporate law uh, this semester, so the subjects that we have of corporate law are law, laws of taxation and uh, the insolvency and bankruptcy codes. Okay, so we do not reach company that. No, sir. So, do you uh, have you read something about the company that separately or no, sir? I have tried to, to an extent, understand the basics of the company that, sir. 
so tell me what all you so sir there are different uh, what are the different types of companies uh, yeah. what is an aoa or an moa and uh, who is what a director is what sir is articles of an association is basically the constitution of the company it uh, gives on the authorized share capital how the company is supposed to function if and uh, in case an aoa is drawn up and there is a shareholders agreement which also gives the right of shareholders the aoa shall uh, uh, shall the aoa shall proceed and it would sustain things like that sir okay good i think uh, that's fair enough so what do you know what, so what are like say the liabilities or rights of a director or liabilities of a director sorry sir that. i am actually not exactly aware of that however i'd still like to give it a try no that's uh, fine i think you you said that you would get to study those facts so tell me uh, how would you rate your research skills if i were to say tell them how do you rate your research skills and how do you go about doing the research with i give so you then, okay how do you go about so generally as you as we mentioned in the uh, previous the session uh, the first thing that i do when i'm given a research proposition is to clearly google it so that i i myself understand what exactly am i looking for and once i have a fair idea of how things are done i like to uh, move more legally into it try to refer to maybe uh, websites of law firms or uh, other uh, websites such as uh, other law blogs so that i can understand what's happening and after that i do an in depth research on the basis of uh, search in legal search engines okay. perfect so i think that this is good i know what you're looking for so tell me uh, the idea is that you are looking to intern with us uh, at which month are you trying to intern with us Uh, so preferably in the month of August. August. And yes, is there any yes, flexibility in the dates? Or, yes, sir. Uh, okay, I think uh, perfect. I, I got to know what I wanted to know. And uh, so tell me, when is it that? Uh, what is? You have any questions for us? Is there something you'd like to ask? Get to uh, know about no, the sir. phone. Nothing. No, sir. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much sir